Take a look at SteamDB and you will see a slew of upcoming games with a lot of hype, including Pal World. At first glance, the game looks like a modern Pokemon with a twist, but after going hands-on for well over a dozen hours, it's clear this early access game just doesn't live up to the hype. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and for the next few minutes, we'll be diving into Pocket Pair's new game, Pal World. Pal World has a lot of potential. I want to make that clear right off the bat. A modern day Pokemon with popular survival and base building elements is appealing to a lot of people. And again, I point to the Steam DB charts as proof. But here's the rub. The game needs to be well developed with a compelling gameplay experience if it hopes to compete against a juggernaut like Pokemon or even Ark. And yes, that is a competitor here. Let's be clear, the game is and will be compared to Pokemon. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Simply look at the pals, the capture mechanic, or even the tower boss battles, and you'll realize the developers weren't exactly shy about creating a game that looked strikingly similar. However, the issue, as far as we can tell, based on our dozen plus hours of experience with the game, has less to do about the parody and more to do about the new systems the team is trying to implement. And quite frankly, the boring and often frustrated way players have to interact with them. Let's start with something central to survival games in general and the overall PAL world experience, exploration, or the lack thereof. There's no use beating around the bush here. Exploring the world of PAL world is boring, plain and simple. The world is broken into a number of different biomes, but throughout the entire world, across every biome, there is simply not that much to see or do. Occasionally, you'll find a point of interest, but to say they're anything more than a simple building used to house a, frankly, pointless vendor or two, well, that's the truth. Even the things that do look remotely interesting are for show only and have no actual bearing on the world. It's as if the team simply scooped up a couple of jumbo assets and slapped them randomly in the world to draw the player's attention for a few seconds, which really doesn't surprise me considering their other title, Craftopia, has a lot of the same environmental assets. Look, we often talk about a lived-in world when discussing open-world RPGs, and I think we should apply that same lens here. We're players exploring a large open world, but that world feels lifeless outside of the PALs themselves. There's almost no development of the place that we're exploring, and that's the central issue with the exploration experience. The world is often a huge selling point in games like this, and even though it's early access, Pocket Pair, like any developer releasing a game into early access, only gets one shot at capturing the hearts and minds of players, and the world, in this case, certainly won't do them any favors. Outside of running across vast expanses of nothingness, hunting for new pals to add to your collection, there is seemingly nothing to entice the player outside of some of the most basic exploration mechanics like finding treasure chests that award you with some coins, arrows, or spheres to capture more pals, as well as eggs that you find around the world. Now, you might think that finding eggs in a monster capture game is exciting, and that's true for a time, but then you realize there are eggs for everything, and almost all of them are for pals that you already have in spades. The allure of finding anything rare and unique is completely non-existent in the experience, and not even the usual blast of dopamine from finding something out in the world lasts for more than an hour tops. Truly, exploration is the biggest disappointment we experienced with the game. It's simply an uninspired and boring world, and while the developers could work through that during early access, it's a terrible first impression and is going to require a substantial overhaul. Where Pal World deviates from its Pokemon inspiration is in the survival mechanics. Quite frankly, this is what we were most excited to check out, and there's definitely some potential here. But let me tell you guys, the execution of this entire system is a mess. Let's start at square one. Capturing pals is relatively straightforward. First, you need to damage them. In the beginning, that means punching them to reduce their health, and later on, using pals and a variety of weapons to deal damage. Oh, but just know your pals can easily kill the pal that you're trying to capture, and if you don't recall them at the right time, there is no stopping them from landing that killing blow. So that's an interesting dynamic. Nonetheless, you will end up with an army of pals because that's part of the progression experience, capturing 10 copies of each pal for an XP bonus. For the purpose of survival, each pal comes with an assortment of skills that all inform the type of work that they can do to support the player's base. Things like planting, mining, farming, transporting, totaling 12 unique skills that all factor into the survival elements of the game. A pal's level with those skills also directly impacts their effectiveness in that task. 
You might be thinking, all right, that's pretty cool. I can build out an awesome base with an army of pals stretched across 12 different skills. And yes, you are right in theory. Because in practice, the way this works is less than glamorous. Once you have a base established and various workstations to man, there's no rhyme or reason to how you assign, manage, and create efficiencies within your PAL workforce. A central tenant of the game is reduced to simply picking up PALs and quite literally chucking them at workstations and hope that they'll not only start working on the required task, but continue to do so until it's complete. That's only if they aren't hungry, tired, sick, or just straight up ignoring their programming. It's pitiful execution of a system that should be one of the most engaging of the Power World experience, and it's honestly a shame. I am genuinely surprised at how long Livid lasted suffering through this element of the game because it is ridiculous in 2024 with so many other high quality survival and colony management games out there to not even have the framework in place to prioritize and assign pals in a logical way. Nope, we are simply chucking them at workstations. The only time this system works is when you can hard assign pals, such as a chickpea to produce eggs at a ranch. In those cases, the system does work, but even then, there's some weirdness with those eggs often immediately ending up in the pal's food basket without you ever seeing them drop on the ground. There are some base loops that do work well, things like farms, which can output food when the right pals are in play, but it's not an all too exciting system. The player creates farms, pals tend the fields, and the pals with the transport skill bring the food to a basket or storage container. Voila, you've got yourself a giant basket of food where all your pals will run to every two seconds to get a quick meal automatically. That's if they're not otherwise hurt, depressed, bored, or any of the other dozen reasons they ignore even the most simple tasks. You might think that the player could step in here and sort of force the hand of these systems, but again, you'd be wrong. A player crafting something like medicine to prevent pals from getting too sick and dying permanently, yes, you heard me right, is just as painful a process. There are only two ways to produce items at a workbench, physically standing there and holding down the produce button, which is painfully slow unless you invest precious stats into crafting or pray that a pal will execute the order. This goes for everything, armor, weapons, ammo, you name it. And at times you can find yourself just waiting around at your base for materials just so you can adventure once more. Again, it's not a great experience. I think you get the picture of just how frustrating even the most basic functionality of a base like this is, but unlike exploration, I do have at least a little hope that this can be fleshed out in early access. A lot of what we talked about revolves around tuning and fixes, not systematic changes to the world. If, and it's a big if, the developers listen to the feedback I can almost guarantee you is coming, there's a chance they can salvage this aspect of the game and make it enjoyable. There is something there, a different idea that's never really been presented this way in another Monster Catcher game, but there's still a long way to go before I'd call it a fun experience. Now that you've seen one of Pal World's fundamental systems, what do you think of the game? What are your first impressions? Let us know in the comment section down below. Let's end on a high note, because while Pal World is certainly not a stellar game, there are some good things about it, namely the pals. Yes, they look like creatures from Pokemon, but why is that a bad thing? There is a variety in the look and the design of each pal, and there is a fun factor stumbling across them in the world. I'll be honest, there is no rhyme or reason to their placement in the world, and I think that goes back to my original points about exploration and world building, but finding new pals is a satisfying enough experience. There are even rare versions of pals, the equivalent of shinies, that if caught have better stats and unique moves. Livid was lucky enough to run across a rare Chicopee almost immediately during his adventure, and once captured, he realized it had a Dragon's Breath style move. For the record, chickens do not come standard with that feature. He also found a rare Depresso later on that had similar unique styled moves. Again, this is fun enough and definitely speaks to the collectors out there who I think will find some enjoyment in tracking down the 111 pals currently in the game. Surprisingly, and maybe this is purely because we're conditioned to think this way, the game doesn't have any sort of pal evolution, at least one that we experienced in any capacity. Of the 38 pals we unlocked during our preview period, not a single one ever evolved into something else. Even pals like Pengullet, a little penguin type pal that you would expect to evolve into the larger Peng King, have no affiliation. Like what? It's very strange, and it's clear the team wants players to use the breeding system to create and unlock different pals. 
pals all have some sort of unique player interaction as well, and this is pretty cool. In some cases, you can craft a saddle and ride your pals for a burst of speed on land or even in the air and gain direct access to their pool of abilities during combat. In other instances, you can empower them for a period of time, and that might mean changing around their damage type or augmenting them with a weapon. If you missed all the pre-launch footage, yes, guns are a big part of this game, and while it is weird to see your cartoon character rocking an AR, that's exactly what Power World allows players to do. All of this comes to a head during the combat. Your goal is to either capture or kill your enemy, and there's really no in-between. Combat takes place in real time, and because you yourself are a substantial part of the damage equation, there's not a whole lot of control in terms of your pals. Most abilities are on a long enough cooldown that your pals will simply auto-use each skill as it becomes available, while you yourself chip away with your preferred weapon, all while avoiding enemy attacks. I don't know about you all, but that's not exactly exciting, and while it's nice to level up and gain access to new abilities for your pals and items for your base, I think I've already made it pretty clear there's no real satisfaction within that system. The ability to swap out your pals mid-combat is a nice feature, and things like that help keep combat in general somewhat enjoyable. But like most things in Power World, that bar is set incredibly low. Look, here's the deal. We're not going to ever tell you a game is great and we're having a blast if we're not. And in the case of Power World, we're simply not enjoying it. That being said, this is early access, a true early access game by all accounts, where the game is half finished and the developers need a substantial amount of time to make it better. As a player, I want to know what is Pocket Pair doing post-launch to make Pal World a better game? Is there a development roadmap? How are they interacting with the community and interpreting feedback? And is there a steady stream of updates that aim to make the game better? As a player and someone that's followed this game for a while now, that's what I want. But as always, how Pal World will be received by the masses has nothing to do with our analysis of the game. It's how the community will react writ large. I do want to be clear here. I don't think this game is a scam by any stretch. Just look at Craftopia, a game that's been in early access by the same team for over four years. Pocket Pair has deployed substantial updates to that game, and I think that's a good indicator of what's to come with Pal World. But at the onset, this is a true not at all there early access game. I'm interested to see what everyone's reaction to the game is and genuinely hope the developers make the necessary changes to capitalize on a unique opportunity to roll out a monster capture game with a fresh twist. Now, if monster capture games are your thing and you're on the hunt for another game in the genre to check out, then give Temtem a look. It's a game we covered for quite some time during its early access period and still think it's a solid game solo or co-op, even if we stop playing it ourselves due to no content really coming out for it. We have quite a few videos on the channel that'll not only get you introduced to the game, but also some of the systems and various secrets you can expect to find if you do decide to check it out. My name is Kodiak and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.